Our guest today is Professor David Backus. Professor Backus holds the Heinz Real Professorship in New York University's Stern School of Business. Uh, prior to joining Stern in 1990, he studied at Hamilton College and Yale University. He's also taught at Queen's University and the University of British Columbia and served on the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. He's currently an editor of the Review of Economic Dynamics, a member of the Board of Editors on the Journal of Economic Literature, and a research associate at the National Bureau of Economic Research. Thank you for joining us, Professor Backus. My pleasure, Luke. Um, maybe to start off a little bit, could you give us some background to why you first came into the economics field? So I was a, a chemistry major as well as an economics major, but I thought economics has the, uh, the best combination of some technical appeal and uh, some real-world uh, applications. Oh, as you know, the Updale's competition focuses on the national mm -hmm. deficit and why college students sh should care. Um, could you maybe just, in a brief summary, why, why do you feel the deficit impor is important? What's important about the U.S. deficit is not the current deficit, but what the deficit's going to be in 20 or 30 years. So the issue for your generation really is whether you're going to be paying for some of the benefits that my generation gets. So in a sense, I'll, I'll be fine, but you guys, should, you, you guys might want to worry. So it really is the, the college students who will be the ones that are the suffering or the, the even younger kids now. The, the ones that yeah, have to pay for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, well, there's some issues that are going to have to be resolved before you guys start paying lots of taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, a few uh, months ago, my, my partner in this project, Jared, uh, saw you speak about the European debt crisis. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just maybe give us a quick summary about what was the European debt crisis? Why did it, why did it occur? So, uh, short summary, maybe. So, <laughs> so, so what's true is, uh, for, for centuries, a uh, classic trigger of economic crises is um, running up too much debt. Now, what do we mean by too much debt? Uh, more than investors wanted to buy. So that could be a small amount, could be a lot. Whenever investors get start panicking, and all of a sudden the government can't issue debt, they have to figure out how to balance the budget some other way. So, so that's a classic issue, and it's shown up uh, in emerging markets regularly. Showed up in Mexico, 94, 95. Showed up in Argentina, 2001. And then uh, more recently, it's shown up in a lot of developed countries, too. So in, in the United States, we can talk about later. In Europe, what you really have is a bunch of national problems that are interrelated. Mm -hmm. But there's no simple story that covers them all. Uh, so in Greece, the Greeks did the traditional thing. They just issued way more debt than their tax revenue could support. Okay. And at some point, investors said, we're not going to buy this. And then the rest of Europe had to decide, well, do we buy some of this? Do we write off some of the debt owned by banks? You know, things like that. In Ireland, it was completely a different story. Ireland had a very disciplined fiscal situation, mm -hmm. but their banking system went under. They, they had made lots of uh, real estate loans. The real estate loans yes. turned, went bad. And then the, uh, the government was a little bit more aggressive than it might have been in bailing out the banks. And it turned out the banks were in such deep problems that bailing them out more or less made the, uh, the country insolvent. Mm -hmm. I had read that uh, the housing market, the, the housing crisis in Ireland was much worse than it ever was in the United yeah, States. Yeah, so it was classic boom and bust. Yeah. yeah so, uh, and the banking system was, uh, was on, the, on the hook for a big chunk of that. Okay. So, and now the Irish government, so potentially the Irish government. So, uh, so that, that's a little bit different story. So again, they're in fiscal difficulty, they have a budget problem, mm -hmm. but it's really the result of a banking problem. Okay. If you look at Spain, it's a bit of a mixture. So Spain has, uh, again, the fiscal situation wasn't as strong as it was in Ireland, but it, it was okay, but they had two problems. So one is uh, serious banking problems, particularly in what they call the cajas, which are these near banks, I think probably analogous to savings and loans, okay. uh, which remember in, the, in this country we had issues with, yes. and, uh, and the regional governments. They don't have a clear line of demarcation between the, uh, the federal government and the regional governments. Okay. So the regional governments ran amok, and now the federal government is on, potentially on the hook for a lot of their, their debts. And again, they had a big housing boom and bust in, in Spain as Spain well. Spain as well. Oh. And then Italy is wildly different. So Italy has much more debt than uh, Spain has as a ratio to GDP, but their, uh, their deficit was pretty small. So it was, it was stable, we would say, that, it, that it's not getting worse. But what happened was, during the crisis, people started to worry, mm -hmm. and they had difficulty issuing debt on reasonable terms. 
So it's almost like a domino effect when one country started to go under the other ones. Uh, well, people, you know, when there's an issue, same, same thing would be true in an industry. One company in an industry has trouble. Everybody else the analysts worries. look at the other ones and say, do they have the same problem or not? Yeah. So, uh, so the main issue in Italy is that the economy isn't growing. We generally look at the ratio of debt to GDP, and if the denominator is growing, that solves all problems, mm -hmm. right? So if the denominator isn't growing, then it's kind of hard to know how you're going to service the debt. Yeah. You, know, you can keep it stable, but the, there's nothing bringing the debt to GDP ratio down. Mm -hmm. So, and that would be true in the United States too. That it's absolutely critical the economy continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So if we go through 20 years of really slow growth, that's going to make all of these issues a lot worse. That brings me right up to our next question. Uh, are the is the situ the situations that happen in the various European countries yep. are they analogous to the ones that to what's happening in the United States now? Um, and really, if there was any fixes imposed in Europe, could those same fixes work in the United States? Well, I'd have to think. The uh, my my gut reaction is the two situations are just wildly different. Mm -hmm. So in the United States, it's um, it's not that we've run up an enormous amount of debt. Although over the last four years we've run up a lot more than we had, and if we keep doing it, we're going to be in uh, in trouble. But the biggest the biggest challenge the U.S. faces is twenty or thirty years down the road, the projections for Social Security first and particularly uh, Medicare medical health care expenses mm -hmm. are that those things are going to grow enormously relative to the size of the economy, and you then face a choice. So first we could be lucky; the projections could be wrong. Uh, in a favorable way. Uh, nobody's betting on that. Yeah. Uh, second thing is, if those continue to grow, we could raise taxes. Now, what do we have to raise taxes to? Well, the guess is, um, right now, uh, government revenue as a fraction of GDP is roughly 20%, you know, 18 to 20% of mm -hmm. GDP, and that's been true for 50, 60 years. Yeah. It's going to have to go up to 25 or more okay. in order to cover these expenses. Mm -hmm. So it's we're talking about it. We're not talking about a small increase in taxes. We're talking about a pretty significant increase. Oh, okay. Choice number B. Choice B is we've got to reduce spending somehow. And this is in some way it's it's an easier issue to deal with because you're reducing future expenses. So you could do things like with Social Security, you just uh, increase the uh, the retirement age or reduce benefits for people in the future. And if it's long enough in the future, it's going to be a lot less politically sensitive. Now the issue is, that the longer we wait, the harder it's going to be to deal with that. So people started talking about this issue in, I don't know, the 1990s for yeah. sure. And we now have almost 20 years in which we've done nothing, and it's me it means that it's going to be a tougher problem going forward. So if we said, you know, your generation we know people are living a lot longer. Suppose we raise the retirement age to 72 or 73 for your generation, you know, that might be a reasonable deal. And you guys have a long time between now yeah. and then to, <laughs> to plan for it. But the longer we wait, the harder it is to, to yeah. work these things through the system. So if you start cutting benefits of people who are getting them now, that's a much tougher political, political thing to, uh, to handle. Just one final question going back to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that various efforts have been in, uh, in, have been put into effect in the different countries. Uh, which ones are which countries are on the way to recovering, and which ones still have a long way to go? You know, good question. If we knew that, uh, I, I would say um, Ireland's doing a lot. They're faced with a lot of debt, so the question is, can they can they give the Europeans some of this debt from bailing out their banks? Italy seems to be in reasonable shape budget wise, but. Uh, the issue there is trying to get the economy going, yeah. and you know there's some obvious things to do there, but they're politically pretty sensitive. Uh, I'm reasonably optimistic on Spain, but um, you know the, there's still a fair amount of uncertainty about yeah. about how Spain's going to work out. And then Greece, Greece is a mess. You know, I think what we would look at. So when you look at companies, one of the things you would look at is the quality of the management. Yeah. So when you look at countries, you would say, what is the quality of the institutions? So in particular, the political institutions. And Greece has just never had very good political institutions. You know, it's in Europe, so we tend to think, well, maybe it's like Germany, but it's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's much more like, I don't know, some developing country. So, so they're a little bit in the middle, and they have, uh, I would say, a long history of fairly, fairly weak political institutions, and that makes it very difficult to deal with whatever, whatever issues you have to deal with. And they, they have some fairly serious ones. Well, 
I think that uh, that brings us to the end of the, the interview. Okay. Thank well, you I want to thank much. you guys. I think this is a great project, and I think one of the issues here is making these issues visible to people. Yeah. And anything you can do to help with that, I think, is really a, an important step forward. I think that's the the founding idea behind the behind the, behind the entire competition is that yeah. uh, a lot of college students may know about the debt, but they might not care, and so we have to make it relatable to them and make sure they realize why why yeah. they should. So. Yeah. Well, thank you very much.